morning. Uh, am I audible? I think it is. It is. Okay. This is probably the fifth year I am meeting uh, you here. And uh, I see, uh, you can see more Indian students this time compared with uh, the last years or the last three, four years. I uh, good to see you all here. Yes. <coughs> Not alone.
extended their support. The apprehensive and credible activities of Sini even touched Mother Teresa. Sini now wanted to manage its programs professionally. The first to join were young women selected from the communities for their leadership qualities who were then trained as health workers and put in charge of these projects. They were then followed by young men and women from the same community who were trained as supervisors, managers and gradually the team grew. Technology was introduced in the early 1980s. At present, majority of the work in Sydney is computerized. Over the years, dignitaries have been appalled by the dedication with which Sydney listened to the society and helped them to help themselves. Fascinated, many of the renowned personalities visited Sydney and lived the experience of helping the needy. At various points of the journey, we were honored with a visit by overseas contemporaries who shared their best practices and endowed the work of Sydney. In turn, they returned with the best practices that Sydney had been implementing over the years. One of Sydney's most important roles today is that of a facilitator. In addition to its emergency ward and nutrition rehabilitation center, Sydney operates an outpatient department, antenatal and reproductive child health clinics. Pregnant women and women with children up to the age of five can come and consult the doctors and the health workers about prenatal care, breastfeeding, nutrition, vaccinations, and childhood ailments. Sydney empowers people by communicating their rights and privileges to them and helps women and children make use of those services already provided by the government. Sydney also reaches out to every level of government from community leaders to policy makers to ensure that as much as possible is being done to help the poor. Our experience in training our own health workers gave us the opportunity to train the government health workers in the mid-80s. During this time, Sunni initiated various collaborative action research studies with the Indian, UN and international agencies through the Sunni Training Unit. Today it caters to over 2,000 trainees every year from different fields of rural communities for their capacity building activities. Sydney has been officially recognized both in India and abroad as a leading authority on mother and child nutrition, healthcare and education. Out of the many accolades, Sydney received the National Award for Child Welfare twice, once in 1985 and then in 2004. Throughout the journey, Sydney had received the appreciation and generosity from prominent individuals of the society. A park where underprivileged children can come and enjoy a day of play and adventure in tranquil and eco-friendly surroundings. Monobitan was primarily developed to give a momentary break to the deprived children of the society. A unique program of a day trip to Monobitan allows a donor to be linked to a group of 70 children who can then enjoy an outing amidst the nature. Sydney enjoys
enjoy tremendous credibility worldwide. Its many friends who have watched the growth of Cine and its work now came together to assist in executing the ambitious plan of Cine International, a globally focused NGO, which was then set up on 1st February 2000 in Italy. Visitors who have come to Cine to see its work have returned convinced that Cine can make a change in the lives of the poor. They have formed groups in Italy, UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, USA and Australia to raise funds for Cine India. The Adolescent Resource Centre was set up in 2000 to address the needs of young people. The centre has been contributing effectively towards improving adolescent and youth health status through piloting innovative programs, networking partnership buildings of stakeholders and research. It is committed to develop, promote and scale up models on issues related to young people's reproductive and sexual health. Poor children are vulnerable children. India has the largest population of children in the world but also the highest number of children engaged in work. These children work not just in sweatshops and domestic service, but also in family businesses or as carriers of other family members. The number of child laborers who seriously damages their education and holistic development is unknown, but ranges from the government's 12.6 million to the civil society estimates of 17 to 80 million children. Surviving on the edge, these vulnerable children are exposed to physical, economic and social exploitation. The Urban Wing of Sydney was launched in 1989 in response to the silent cries of the children living on the streets, railway platforms, markets, slums and squat colonies. Sydney provides night shelters for the protection of girl children living on the street housed at Ahadiribari. Halfway houses and short stay homes offer a home and market to the children who do not want to return to the streets after exposure to a better quality of life. A sick bay with a doctor and trained health workers is also there that treats the sick street children. The short stay home for boys run by Sydney is called Kamara Ghar. It is a short stay home where the children are provided with elementary education along with computer training. They also have other recreational activities. In partnership with the government, Sydney provides a response team in Brisbane Mall for calls to Child 91098, a 24-hour free telephone helpline which provides intervention and assistance to children in trouble. Adolescents and children, both in and out of school, are equipped to strive to complete their elementary education and are provided with the knowledge to be able to make informed choices about health and nutrition. Education counseling, therapeutic recreation and health and nutritional care are extended through drop-in centers to those who live alone or with their families in and around the railway platforms. Sydney works to identify children who are either not in mainstream education or are in danger of leaving it. It offers bridging courses to enable children who are outside the education system to return to it. Using a network of key workers and counsellors who are linked to schools and government, Sydney works in local communities to convince families that the benefit of education will, in the long term, outweigh the benefit of a low and temporary wage which a child may earn instead of going to school. Sydney also works to overcome forms of social exclusion such as caste and gender discrimination which continue to play a part in keeping children, particularly girls, out of school. Sydney, through years of experience, observed that in its area of 
cooperation. The population is vulnerable in terms of socioeconomic, demographic, education, sanitation, and maternal and child health indicators. CENI implement projects which facilitate convergence of three stakeholder groups community, local governance, and service providers for the increased accessibility and utilization of existing services, thereby establishing child and women friendly communities. Close contacts with all levels of government ensure that Sydney is exceptionally well placed to offer relief when disaster strikes. The emergencies in which Sydney has worked are Bhuj earthquake, the tsunami, Kashmir earthquake, Ayla in West Bengal, flooding in Mushidabad, Bihar and Uttar Dinajpur in recent times. Sydney has also been working with communities to prepare them for emergencies. We thank those who supported us through our journey of 38 long years and believe in the work we do. With your support, we have been able to reach out to 5 million population in West Bengal, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Thank you. Uh, I'll stop here. Uh, this film uh, is, uh, will be, uh, is basically uh, give you an understanding of how Sini uh, works and the kind of work that we do. Presently, we are uh, implementing about 100 projects across these two states of West Bengal and Jharkhand. And these projects are uh, focused on uh, creating a society that's basically friendly towards children. So we call it a child-friendly community where all services and entitlements of the children are ensured by the service providers, that is the government, and at the local level is the uh, panchayat system, which is the lowest strata of the administration. And CINI brings in an convergence between the service providers and the recipients, as the children and the women, and bring them together under one umbrella that all services and their entitlements are ensured from the government based on different programs and schemes that already exist with the government. We have some services, particularly for those children who are into difficult circumstances, they get the railway stations on the streets or who have been missing or ran away or a victim of trafficking, for in the, mostly in urban locations and in uh, North Bengal. So this is in a nutshell our reach. And furthermore, uh, during the discussions, I'll have uh, time to spend with you. Thank you. Thank you very much.